happens, it's Tizzle here. So in this video, I'm going to be doing kind of just an in-depth breakdown of all the gameplay footage that we saw in the reveal trailer. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about like the new UI and then just all the different buffs and stuff that we can stack together. Obviously, like my niche is like gameplay oriented and making builds and finding cool synergies. And this is just going to crank it up to a million. It's actually crazy. Like this was the first scene that they showed in the reveal trailer today. So we see a grapple melee, two withering, sorry, grapple, uh, grenade, two withering blade melees and a uh, acrobats dodge, which makes you radiant. And then we've got what I assume is the new blade dancer super on arc and then whatever this pink bar is we might be able to figure out what that is by the end of this video but yeah this is what they opened up with and i was like what the hell is this so it's a new subclass and it's called prismatic i believe and it basically combines all the subclasses and i do just want to get this out of the way right away i've been talking in some of my videos about like how power crept we are and I do see some comments that like say we're not or that soloing dungeons and stuff is is like still hard. And don't get me wrong, it is. It is still a very good accomplishment to solo a dungeon. But when I just say we're power crept and that it's never been easier, that is also true. Um, like I soloed the Whisper mission today. I did that way back in the day. I didn't solo flawless it, but I did it with like two seconds left back in the day. And it was like a grind. Today, I beat it on my second try. I had like five minutes left. Uh, the run's on my channel if you want to watch it. But yeah, I just wanted to say that even though we're power crept, like things can still feel hard for you. I'm not trying to disparage things. Um, and the reason I'm saying all this is because this new subclass is pretty much just power creep incarnate. Like you can get all the best things from every subclass all rolled into one. And that's what I want to really focus on in this video so i did just want to make those remarks off the bat um so yeah if you're struggling soloing dungeons again we all start somewhere i'm just saying back in the day it was a lot harder to do those you can just see it with uh the way you play and just how many damage phases it used to take to beat these bosses versus how many it takes now but there is still tr challenging content like onslaught wave 50 on legend was a true challenge for me and my teammates today and it was a lot of fun um but yeah, so now let's jump into this and look at this crazy stuff. And I'm just going to be breaking down everything that's happening. So this was how they started the trailer, basically. And I was just, I was shocked. And me and my buddies were texting in the Discord. And it was, it was just crazy. So we see a Radiant Dodge and we have Radiant on the left. Sorry, the, uh, the quality gets really shitty like when I pause it. But we've got Void Invisibility. And then we've got Radiant and Gunpowder Gamble. Uh, and then we've got Curse Thrall. So this is where the it seems like the new weapon, uh, like say you have Bait and Switch active, it's gonna come up down here. So that's really nice because literally today I was trying to run Lucky Pants and I could never tell if I was out of luck. So over here, you can't really see it, but it says too stylish. There's a little red thing. So that's your cooldown from Stylish Executioner. So they've got Stylish Executioner on and Gunpowder Gamble, their Radiant and their Invis. And then again, this is just from the Abyss Defiant auto rifle he's got. But yeah, so here's our debuff. I'll play it so you can kind of see it blinking there. Throws the Gunpowder Gamble, <clears throat> then does like whatever the heck that thing is. And then it says Facet of Command. So you'll see this come up a lot. And I have no idea where he got Unraveling Rounds from and then Demolitionist. So yeah, this is gonna kind of be the form of the video. I'm just gonna stop at certain points just to point out all the things that we're gonna be able to combine in uh, Final Shape. So unraveling rounds on this new machine gun. There's a bunch of the new enemy faction that they're fighting, these Grims. We'll get into that at the point when they start talking about it in the video. Then this is that new Blade Dancer, so, sorry, Storm's Edge it's called. So that looks pretty cool. Reconstruction, you can see. Radiant, Invis. There's just so much going on. It's, dude, I am just so hyped. Like, <laughs> we are going into the build heart of the Traveler and the Traveler's chosen you gifts early over this. And so this is just them kind of 
talking about the genesis of this idea of we can wield the light and the dark. So I'll just kind of let them talk about it. Dark armor. We're like, we really need this in the final shape. This is the ultimate form of being a guardian to wield light and darkness at the same time. We build. So real quick, uh, this looks like a new super. Not sure what it is. And then we've got a cold snap grenade, the incinerator snap, and some type Prismatic, of Prismatic, exactly, to be that. Prismatic <laughs> is the new subclass in the final shape where you can... So they had Spark of Resistance, which is on the Arc subclass. Again, the Blade Dancer, a magnetic grenade, swashbuckler on their, uh, on their weapon. We still have the heavy-handed cooldown at 10 seconds. Uh, again, this is on the right. In some of the gameplay, you'll see it on the left. So my guess is just that that was from before they made these changes. See, this says development footage, so it is subject to change. But yeah, just wanted to point those out. Combine certain class abilities from different games. So yeah, again, combination blow, which is already like one of the best things in the game on Assassin's Cowl. And then you also can have Radiant while you're doing this. Plus, a magnetic grenade has the potential to weaken. So you can get your 25% buff from Radiant plus 15% weaken, which we get this season from the artifact with uh, Revitalizing Blast. So that that could just be a thing going forward, which is bonkers to me. Like the damage stacking is going to be crazy. And they talk about it later. We'll get to that later. Damage types together. Getting light and dark and mastering it. No one's done that before. Like the way. Actually, I just noticed this. So this is cross counter, which is Liar's Handshake, but they're Void Invisibility, which is um, Assassin's Cowl. So somehow they're combining those and we will get to that Getting later. Getting light and dark mastery. And no one's that. done that before. Again, sorry like about the, the quality. Witness is manipulating sometimes. the energies like this, but the witness is not a master of light and dark. You are. The guardian is. Players are. All right. So we see a lightning surge melee. Uh, we've got Phoenix Dive. Again, whatever this new super is and a vortex grenade. And then we made stasis shards and then this facet of command. So there's facet of protection and facet of command, which you'll see come up a lot. And you can see this like new super bar thing starts draining. So I know that's tied to it somehow, but obviously we don't have nearly enough info to figure out exactly how it works. But I just wanted to point that out. In Prismatic, underneath your super bar, there's a light meter and a dark meter oh, as well, you, you deal go. damage with either light. OK, so you can see them. You can see them uh, coming up and he talks about it. If you're dealing damage with light or dark, it's going to fill them. And then I think you can like combine it to do this Prismatic. I'll let him talk about it damage or dark damage it fills the respective sides of the meter once both sides are full so again storm grenade needle storm super three melee charges uh phoenix dive pretty crazy oh you get this new level of power that we're calling transcendence <clears throat> i love transcendence so transcendence you do these cool motions for warlocks we have this cool like mystic pose hunters are going to do this cool like the titan when we're just go okay this is crazy because i am such a consecration fan and here we can see so if enemies are frozen they take more melee damage i believe <clears throat> we've got the thruster glacier grenade this is the new void uh like sentinel thing where you throw the axes and then we've got three melee charges like on strand, but we're able to do a consecration melee. So we've got void, arc, strand, stasis, and then clearly solar. So you could potentially get three consecrations because we have three. And watch how fast the the melees charge. While you're transcendent, this isn't you the get part, a sorry. new unique. <laughs> but later on, you can see it charges really fast. Grenade. So here we've got this facet of protection. Combines. And I'll just let them talk about the grenade because it looks like a grapple grenade now, but it's actually like combining two different elements with this grenade. That's why it's purple. So he'll talk about that. You get a new unique grenade that combines both light and dark together. The hunters like, get this fire and ice combo titans together. So fire and ice on the hunter. And you can see he's got volatile rounds, gunpowder gamble ready. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It looks like a trip mine. And then tether. The hunters like, get this fire and ice combo. Titans, strand, and arc. Strand and arc, so it like suspends them and jolts them. So that's pretty crazy. And they've got knockout proc. They've got hammer strike. Uh, rampage times three. The warlock. I'm really curious about this super. It looks like a scion head almost. 
And then we've got a void grenade. He talks about it. It's void and stasis. Stasis and void together. You have a weapon damage bonus that stacks on top of other weapon damage. <clears throat> so, <laughs> Radiant and Devour. Uh, comment down below if you want me to make a video kind of combining these already because you can combine like some solar and void stuff anyways there's things you can do to get like restoration and devour so if you're interested in seeing that let me know but yeah um again we've got storm caller the stasis melees a arcane needle phoenix dive i think the new grenade and then yeah radiant and devour so again combining solar and void which is crazy damage bonuses your grenade and melee are both instantly refunded when you cast transcendence so you so that's important. Your melee and grenade are instantly refunded when you cast Transcendence. So you can kind of like spam it back to back. Like with a Ward of Dawn, you throw a grenade, cast Ward of Dawn, and then you get your grenade right back. That you can sounds loop like instantly what this will refunded be. when you cast Transcendence. So you can loop them together one after the other. That's really exciting. That is so good. <laughs> We're kind of thinking about Prismatic as this advanced subclass where you have. So he casts a Thunder Crash, but then has a Tangle cooldown. So this is what I was talking about. It seems like your cooldowns are now on the right going forward. Again, I could be very wrong, but we did see it on the right sometimes, which would be really nice. They said they're changing the UI and it's going to take a lot of getting used to. But yeah, it'll be really nice to see your cooldowns over here. And then volatile rounds, amplified, knockout. More build crafting options, more. So, and then he goes into a consecration. So knockout you uh, increases your more melee damage. I can't remember how much, but so you can have knockout potentially. Look at this. So he's sliding. So we have three consecration melees. Just crazy. Build crafting options. Like what the heck is Heart of Inmost Light going to do on Titan now? Like, oh my God, it's going to be crazy. More potential combinations. More. So there he gets a melee kill, gets void invisibility. So again, something like Assassin's More fragments Cowl, than you normally And then right into a grapple uh, grenade. More fragment slots. Amplified and radiant. Get. That is a this is Hellion. That's like the new solar. A lot of common slots. We've got like Arc Souls and Void Souls. That's the new solar. Socket them than you normally soul. get. That is a lot of combinations. 2,300. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just the art director. I think that prismatic. So again, uh, Radiant, when he throws out his stasis melee, which is pretty cool. So it's like Ember of Torches, but with uh, Shuriken and goes in Viz. It feels like you are doing. And then again, we had that too stylish uh, cooldown on the left this time, but we have seen it on the right. I think that prismatic feels <clears throat> like you are doing combinations you shouldn't be able to do. It feels and gets a little amplified. game I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> a, a little, a little bit. Yeah, they joke and say it feels a little broken. Not gonna lie. Like, yeah, it looks a little broken too. So here we've got a phoenix dive. This guy just cast out threadlings. So that's actually really cool that you can get rid of your threadlings with a phoenix dive now, because right now you just can do it with a. Ring. And they got cured. So one thing that's really cool about this is like the one thing that really hurts stasis, in my opinion, more than any subclass is just the lack and arc, I guess. But it's just the lack of ways to get your health back, because like that's what makes solar so good, in my opinion, is restoration. So now it seems like we're going to be able to like use stasis stuff and get resto. So that's really nice. You're going to be like, oh, no, what have I done? I'm going to be here all night. And I say it's nice, like it is like there's reasons I crutch solar in the hardest content. Uh, so it will be nice to like mix up my stuff. But again, don't get it twisted. This is power creep being able to combine these things like it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It looks amazing, but it it's crazy powerful. So we've got Blessing of Blades on right. I have no idea what that is, but just pointing that out. And then this facet of protection. So I'm not sure how they stun this Unstoppable Ogre. Maybe there's a Tangle on our right because there is a Tangle cooldown. Uh, 
but it's on a Titan. I know like your Tangles can suspend can suspend enemies on Warlock, but yeah, just saying, I don't know how they stun this guy, but they do. And then I'm not sure what this light shield breaker is either. Maybe it's part of this forgotten deep lost sector thing. I'm not sure. See, they get suspended from somewhere. And then again, we've got the scientific method from Tractor Cannon. Uh, once he procs it, so that's your weapon buff. It's not just about the mastery of light and dark. It's not just about using multiple powers at the same time. It's about figuring out how they work in concert in really interesting ways. So again, Radiant and Devour. Ways. We're transcending kind of the, the bounds of light and darkness. There's all these subclasses that really resonate with people. And now you can finally combine those and make your own guardian. There's that new Twilight Arsenal, it's called. And this thing looks really finally awesome, actually. Finally combine those and make your own guardian feel very uniquely you. This like really opens up the doors for unexpected, like really wild stuff. I love um, being a hunter and having gunpowder gamble and blowing them up. And then we're like, but wait, 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 what if you could slow enemies? You could throw out, you know, your shurikens and then you blow them up as well. And it's like, okay, I didn't think I could ever do those two things at the same time. And you're telling me I can do as much as you could. So again, slow there's a strand fragment. Uh, when you get a melee kill, it gives you unraveling rounds and they have that on, even though this is like stasis, stasis, stasis. Somehow they get oh, unraveling enemies. rounds here. You could throw out, you know, your shuriken and, See, and then you blow up as well. And it's like, okay, so, that's I didn't cool. think I could ever do those two things at the same time. And you're telling me I can do as much as I want in time. Ooh, I didn't notice that before. So this is that frost armor thing. We've heard about it. So uh, my stasis subclass school videos are going to be out of date in just a couple months. So that's a good feeling. And you're telling me I can do as much as I want. You can throw with. Speaking of the subclass school, though, it's going to be very important to know like everything, how it works on other subclasses, because, yeah, now you're going to be able to synergize it in a bunch of different ways. So, yeah, go check those videos out. I worked really hard on them during blade melee and like bounce it between a bunch of people and get like three kills from one melee. And now your gunpowder gamble is like fully charged. Right. And so like certain interactions, I think, get a lot easier <laughs> just because we've sort of made the aspects a little bit, a little bit more permissive, a little bit, a little bit looser. I think when we play test, I'm probably so devour and amplified, pretty nice. And then right hook is the season of the plunder um, origin trait. So I guess origin traits pop up down where the weapon is going to be do. running, and then reaper cool down on the right. Probably warlock with um, this, the lightning surge build. This looks completely busted. And uh, what's that new game mode hardware or whatever where it. It's like a new crucible game mode where it takes away abilities, I believe. Uh, it's going to be needed because this right here would break crucible. Where you have arcane needle for three melee charges, and then you combine that with lightning surge. You can throw bleak watcher. So, yeah, he just said it. Three arcane needle melees with lightning surge. <laughs> that would just be obnoxious as all hell in trials. Or on top of that for just like a little extra crowd control, or you can throw a devour. And so again, Radiant, Devour, Amplified, we got all that going so on. So you're you know, cool. jumping in, lightning surging, that's killing a bunch of stuff. You're activating Devour. That gives you infinite sustain, effectively, to stay in the fight. As a Titan, you can just quickly start using your arc abilities to jolt all the enemies around you and then kind of finish them off with like the cool blades of Strand. And it's so satisfying to see how fast you move. It's a very like fun, destructive, build that you can just like destroy everything around you and it, it, it's super fun. There was this moment for me where I was like, wait a minute, I could send out Threadlings and have a Bleak Watcher. It just creates these moments of escalation within the combat and I think that's really exciting for me. If you combine Bleak Watcher and Feed the Void, you consume your grenade to throw your Bleak Watcher out there and so it's, you know, locking stuff down. So again, here we see the Tango cooldown on the left. I do hope it gets moved to the right because there's already a lot of stuff over here. And with stasis, doing crowd control, you can clean that stuff up pretty easily with, you know, an arcane needle melee. So 
again, we've got Devour. We're throwing Bleak Watchers. We've got the Needlestorm Super, Play, which is three crazy. charges. And those amplified. ability kills will activate Devour, which presumably from a, I'm guessing that's a Volt gives shot you more GL, grenade energy sure. every time Devour activates. So lets you loop your Bleak Watcher, and so you can have like multiple Bleak Watchers. Or just for getting arc kills with arc weapons. Uh, maybe out in the field, freezing stuff everywhere. You're just like launching your cool strand melees out and everything's dying and it's great. Insane. <laughs> Embracing the challenge of like, how do we make stuff that wasn't initially intended to like work together in the same build? Like, how do we twist them and warp them and push and pull this and that to make them work together? I'm excited about you know, seeing uh, all the players like talk about their favorite combinations. I'm just looking forward to all the, the videos that people make of their own custom builds with their own exotics that they're pairing it up with to create like this, these amazing builds. It feels infinite to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's true. It does feel infinite. Like just looking at this gameplay, like we haven't even got hands on. Yeah, just the stuff you see just looks crazy. So there again, it's a consecration melee with an arc grenade and two strand melees, but he does a consecration. Onslaught and cascade point you can see on the bottom left. <coughs> bait and switch on this so it looks like it might have reconstruction or envious assassin because it's got a lot in the mag and then we see bait and switch on this strand machine gun in the final shape we're going to be making these new exotic class items these new exotic class items allow you to steal perks from other exotics and combine two perks together into one single all right so we see higher power level um which i said in my prep guide for final shape so anyways that is confirmed or basically confirmed uh i just want to talk about the exotic class item real quick i've been saying i was hoping for exotic class items for a long time here was my idea i thought you could do an exotic class item that allows you to equip two exotic uh, weapons. So like Anarchy and Wither Horde, just for instance. Uh, that was one idea I had. And then the other thing that an exotic class item could do, which this one, it, it's not how it works. But anyways, my idea was, again, instead of any exotic, you run an exotic class item, but then it opens up a third aspect. So on Titan, you could have Roaring Flames with Sunspots, Soul Invictus with Consecration. So again, no exotic, so you couldn't have Pyrogales or Syntheseps, but you could have all those three things combined, plus the fragment slots from them. So you'd get six fragment slots, uh, and on Hunter, they have one aspect that gives three fragment slots, so they'd get like seven. Uh, anyways, that was my idea for exotic class items. Let me know what you think. I thought it was kind of a neat idea. Might be very broken, but this also looks quite broken, and yeah. Uh, we'll go over what kind of stuff you can get Sonic. on this. The new perks class that item. come on them are. So, right there, it says Stoicism, Spirit of the Ophidian. So, that's like Ophidian Aspect, Weapons Ready Very Quickly, Spirit of the Star Eater, Orbs of Power Overcharge Your Super, Star Eater Scales. But what's interesting is this is a Warlock exotic, this is a Hunter exotic, and this is a Titan. So, holy fuck. <laughs> uh,. Basically, you're going to be able to get other classes exotics on different classes. Like, it's crazy. Spirit of the Star Eater. Think of this. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's going to be nuts. Random rolled. One thing that is going to be fun is. And yeah, this just shows. To chase that. these perks and then find different combinations that work really well. D 
these new class items are all about Prismatic and making that feel good. So it's going to be all about enhancing your builds and your combination of light and darkness and achieving transcendence and what transcendence does. They also look so good. With these class items, we wanted them to stand out as special. They have these two perk columns. So special. real quick. They What's his sword? It's it's a stand solar out sword. As okay, special. Let's break this down. So it's a stasis subclass, solar sword, but you can see they get death throws. They here. have death throws, which is Verity's brow, uh, Verity's brow, sorry, um, exotic, whatever, exotic intrinsic, plus gunpowder gamble. Yeah, anyways, surrounded sword. But yeah, death throws on a hunter. So. Also These two crazy. perk columns that take aspects from other exotics. Exotic class items are bayonet locked, Markov chain. So that's really nice too. I didn't notice that before. So bayonet locked, that's really nice to know because sometimes if you're in the heat of battle, you forget if you've procced it already. So then you may accidentally like deproc it when. You just forgot that you did. I, I really like that. That's really nice. That you do things that other classes consider their own, but now they're yours. <laughs> so, Assassin's Cowl. This is a Warlock, by the way. Finisher and Powered Melee Final Blows Grant Invis. So, Assassin's Cowl's intrinsic I managed perk. to get four months. And then Spirit of the Syntheseps. Like, literally two of my favorite exotics in the game rolled on to one Warlock bond. Improves melee damage when you're surrounded. Uh, yeah, just right. crazy. Slow him down, blow him up, hunter build. Again, so he just talked about earlier, just for an example, you could run this. I'm assuming if you're running an exotic bond or exotic class item, you can't run any other exotic. That would make sense. Um, so we're just going to assume that that's the case. So you can't run something like Winter's Guile, which would like work with this, because that's not how it works. But anyways, um, so... He talked earlier about using lightning surge with the three strand arcane needle melees. So think of that. Now you're going to be able to lightning surge. You're going to get, I can't remember what Syntheseps buff is now because they nerfed it. Uh, sorry, I'm blanking. But anyways, you're going to get the increased damage on your melee, which is your lightning surge melee. Plus, then you'll go invisible right after you get a kill with it because of Assassin's Cowl. So this is like the stuff that we're looking at being able to do. It's Form crazy. Him, slow him down, blow him up, hunter build, a roll in the exotic cloak that made it so powered melee kills caused enemies to ignite. Okay, real quick, because I noticed this the first time. He says powered melee kills cause targets to ignite. Now watch this. Slow him down, blow him up, hunter build, a roll in the exotic cloak that made it so powered melee kills caused enemies to ignite. Now watch the gameplay. And also, I could get an extra dodge charge, so I could do it. Oh, he does kill him. See, I thought it was just a melee tag, and it gets an ignition. But this guy dies, and he's the one that ignites. Extra slow charge on enemies. Okay. When I first watched it, I thought uh, I thought it was just a melee hit caused an ignition. And I was like, oh my god, if you can get ignitions that easily just from hitting with a melee. But no, he does get a kill. So never mind. Listen to this Night. guy. My and mistake. also, I could get an extra dodge charge, so I could do an extra slow charge on enemies at the same time. We want it to feel a little broken. It definitely felt like I had two exotics on my cloak, which is kind of the intention. There you go. He said it. It felt like I had two exotics on my cloak, which is the intention. And we just went over it with the Assassin's Cowl Syntheseps thing. Like, that is going to be insanely strong. We want that to feel like you're bending the rules a bit. <laughs> it just opens up the space for mix and matching in a way that I think is going to just be fun to see what combinations people find and like and what becomes the meta. It's so true. Like, um, I don't know. You can make a lot of unique builds, but a lot of the stuff you see in solo flawless GMs and all this stuff it's very, very similar builds. And what she just said is, yeah, there's going to be so many more combinations and unique things that you can come up with 
And that is literally my favorite thing about Destiny. I've always loved that ever since like build crafting came into the game. So this, <laughs> this has just been like the best news ever for me today because all this stuff looks crazy and I can't wait to make some nutty builds. One thing though is these class items, it sounds like it's random rolls. So it's also going to be a lot tougher to specifically copy builds from other creators because like right now it's like okay throw on don chorus and do this but if you don't have those like the syntheseps assassin's cowl cloak then you're not going to be able to do that build just saying like i don't care i'm gonna i'm gonna go nuts with whatever stuff yeah anyways i'm just pointing that out so this empowered abilities i'm not sure if that's hoyle like Heart of Inmost Light, but he does a grapple and then he gets that Empowered okay. Abilities buff and then he throws like a Gunpowder Gamble or something and gets times two. Or maybe it's when, yeah, okay, it's when he throws the gamble. So also they very interesting. amazing. They have visual effects that activate when you are transcendent. It just really ties into this overall theme. But on top of that, the gameplay with basically stealing exotic traits from other exotics and even from classes that aren't you adds this element of spice to them and the fact that it's random rolls you're going to want to keep looking for the right one for your builds so he just said it it's random rolls and you're going to want to keep looking for the right one that enhances your builds a lot of people lately have been saying there's no grind anymore in destiny nothing like nothing's worth chasing because all our weapons are sufficient in the hardest stuff which is basically gms or like master raids or dungeons um so where's the chase for me i love build crafting and so for me i'm gonna be getting thank god we're getting more vault space because i'm gonna have so many exotic cloaks with so many different perk combinations and just make the nuttiest builds rolls you're going to want to keep looking for the right one for your builds so yeah that's huge news it's it's certainly bringing i play the game because i just love the gameplay and love doing stuff and i love sharing content with you guys uh but it is true like there's very little things like i farmed for a slammer but in the last month aside from like getting on to make content which has basically been my subclass school for the last month Aside from doing that, uh, I haven't really played. And so, yeah, this is just going to crank up the grind for me. I'm actually going to have something to chase and not just play for the fun of it. Alright, so this is the new enemy faction. So if you want a little bit closer look, this is just concept art. The Dread are this new They're called the Dread. New witness faction. When you see these new characters, not only do they That's pretty cool. It's got like a pyramid ship shooter. Pretty see neat. these new characters, not only do they look unique and new but you see like a through line that we've been building through the years that connects it all together so these guys are called grim they're like flying bat type things and you've seen a member of the drill also that machine gun pretty cool look at the bullets flying out the side and it's got the heart and you've seen a member of the dread before you might remember seeing the Tormentor make a big appearance last year. Well, that was just the first one. You have like this slate of new enemies with like the Tormentor and the Subjugator. So yeah, Subjugators, uh, they're similar to Tormentors. They can cast Stasis and Strand. They talked about this like way back in the day. And the Weaver and the Attendant. And so these are the other ones, Weaver and Attendant. And the Subjugators and the Weaver. 
Weaver, so probably an orange bar. For India, ten. Probably Nintendo the same. Cream. Red bar. And the husk. This is like the embodiment of the witness in these new enemies. So the husk look really aggressive. The Grim is probably one of my favorite new enemies that we have in Destiny. I think it's a poster child of the Dread in some ways. It's this bat with a gun. The gun bat, yes, exactly. <laughs> and it suppresses you if you look. Cream and it swoops all around the battlefield. It's a profile we've never seen in Destiny. You. Which is another thing a lot of my friends and stuff have talked about is kind of getting like an enemies 2.0 things that can suppress us more so it's cool to see bungie kind of leaning into that with this new faction are facing now the first flying character with actual wings yeah their movement looks they can very obnoxious. screech <laughs> and if that hits you it suppresses your abilities it also slows you down also it, slows something that immediately appealed to the team and made us think we have to do this we have to make this character. All right, so we have some more concept art. So weak spot destroyed, pilot creature spawns. So they talk about this. So when you kill it, it like spawns this thing. The husk is this melee <clears throat> bruiser who has these incredibly dangerous looking blades and they're going to do these cool acrobatic attacks. So it kind of reminds me of a Lucent Hive Hunter, honestly, just small. They hurt. They have two of these very sharp melee weapons, and they just come charging with those things, and we'll just slice and dice. They are really dangerous, especially in groups. If you manage to kill the husk, you have to be careful, because if you kill it the wrong way, what's inside of the husk, the geist is going to pop out, and it's going to seek you out. A geist has killed me more than I care to admit. Now I'm like looking everywhere every time I go into a fight and I'm like, is it? It reminds me of mini screebs, honestly. If you were around back in the one season that they had the Mindbender's Ambition Strike, whatever that was called, Hollowed Lair or something. Is there a husk somewhere? Is there a husk somewhere? Because I'm targeting that first. <laughs> the Weaver and the Attendant are our strand and stasis scions that have been reshaped by the Witness. We wanted to show like the influence of. Oh yeah, that's that new. There's some new Titan like grenade or something. Anyways, it can like block incoming damage. You can see the meter the on the left. We wanted to like show like the influence of darkness powers on these characters. They have a stasis ability that can shoot at you that will freeze you. They have a strand ability that will pull you across the battlefield. The fact that you can get suspended and frozen in place just adds a big new dynamic to the fight. The Weaver does something we've never done before. It'll shoot out this complete, powerful strand wave. If that thing hits you, it's almost like a rubber band. It like pulls back and like snaps and that like pulls you towards that character. That looks extremely obnoxious, honestly. They're doing that to you. Yeah, you can handle it. As soon as there's multiple characters trying to pull you in different directions towards you, you have to approach it in a different way. Yeah, like if they can pull you out of cover, that is going to be dangerous for sure. We're really excited about everything that we've been doing for the final shape. It just feels like there's a really cool through line through all of this. It's the culmination of the Guardian's journey over the last 10 years. We wanted to deliver something that's really like fun and exciting and engaging for players. It is amazing to see this initial inspiration carried all the way through to become a reality in the final shape. All right, yeah, and then this is just like some final shape stuff. Um, I'm sure you can find it online, but that's the end of the gameplay type stuff, which was what I wanted to cover. Again, go over like all those debuffs and buffs and all that stuff. Uh, the exotic class items, the new faction. So that's going to do it for my video. If you're still watching, uh, thanks so much for watching to the end. Let me know down below what you think of all this stuff. Like I said, I'm beyond hyped. Uh, 
I know social media is blowing up about it today and everyone's saying they finally let Bungie cook and it is very true. Mad props to those devs. Uh, I remember in October when the layoffs happened, everyone was all Destiny's dead, blah, blah, blah. I've never been one to like be a Destiny downer. I kept making content all through it and I will continue to because the reason I started YouTube was because of this game. I didn't start YouTube and then find a game. I found a game I loved and then I was like, I want to share my builds and things with people. So for me, uh, it's very promising because it's like, it's like a destiny three to me almost, um, with how much it's going to open up the game and expand on build crafting. We get a new faction, which is crazy. Exotic cloaks, just, I could go on and on and I have, so I should wrap this video up, but yeah, suffice it to say I'm very hyped and let me know how you're feeling and let me know if you enjoyed this. I know it went pretty long, but I am a detailed person and I just wanted to go over the trailer in detail uh, for myself to look at it closer and to hopefully help you guys and point out some neat little interactions that you might have missed. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and take care.